that was a close one. I thought I thought I was gonna be emotionally broken again on my birthday. Uh, glad that was not the case. Luckily, I I mean I like I was on the verge of crying, but there were more or less ver like tears of joy rather than tears of sadness because everything that happened throughout this episode it was it wasn't as sad as last week's. Anyway, what is up, ladies and gents? Nate here, bringing you my review for Your Own Lie in April, episode twenty-one, known as Snow. Yeah, because uh, Corey's somewhat confession scene on on the rooftop with Kosei. That's, I think that might be the closest thing of a confession scene we're going to get from Corey. Unless something happens next week in the finale, which is probably going to leave us in depression. So the only thing I disliked about the episode was the fact that they, they started the episode telling us everything that happened last week with Corey and her incident. And essentially, like, it was really sad in all of this. And then, and then it just plays the opening. And... And the opening is such like a like a poppy song, right? It's so joyful and jolly and all of this. And I'm like, way to kill the mood, A1 Pictures. Come on now. So with this episode, it it went by like super fast. It went like like it was like what 22 minutes or something like that. It went by in like five. And I'm like, what? What? That's it? No, give me more. Give me the finale. Anyway, moving on. So in this episode, we essentially see. The aftermath of Corey's incident, which it seems like it's not too bad. It was just like, I guess just like an incident that happened at that moment. With that going on, we see that Kosei is pretty much in the exact same situation that he was two years ago with his incident with his mom, where he's like, like, just like bundled up in like the fetal position, not essentially like, he's like just holding his knees, just like, oh man, my life sucks. Why does everyone I care about, like, are taken away from me all I did was wanted my mom to get better and all I did was fall in love and yet their their just music is just taking them away from me luckily Subaki decides to do something and I, I kind of wanted it to where Subaki was the one to help Kosei get back on his feet and go see Cory again because we see that Cory sends Kosei a letter saying hey you should bring cannolis and essentially he's like this gives him this gives him like like a jump start of hope and he does so, but like it wasn't. It was through the help of Seto that Kosei was able to go back to school and see the letter and go see Corey again and have that whole snow scene that I'm about to get to. Don't worry. But like I rather I would rather have like Subaki done it. But it's 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 whatever. It would have been better for Subaki's character if she did it. But then again, we haven't seen Seto, and Seto is his teacher, so it. I'm okay with the decision that happened. So Kosei brings cannolis to Cory, and they decided to go to the rooftop to eat it because that's what Cory wants. And Kosei, being the good guy that he is, he just wants to abide by her wishes because he doesn't know how much time she has left. And they, they have, they essentially have a conf like like Cory understands what what she's been putting Kosei through, like experiencing the same things that he experienced two years ago. We've seen this, and it's. It's just like both the characters know what they're going through. Like they, they like know each other so well at this point, but not like into detail. Like as Corey says, she doesn't know what like Kosei likes. She knows she likes he likes egg sandwiches and he likes moo moo milk and he like. But what she doesn't know is like what anime he likes or like what he likes to collect or anything like that. And she wants to know that and that she's gonna struggle and struggle and struggle into like so she can chair so she can remember the times that they had together because she she wants to cling on to those memories she doesn't want it to fade away or anything like that and she essentially tells Kosei that she's gonna get a surgery and hopefully it's she's gonna keep on she's gonna keep on struggling after surgery so she can get better and so that they can make that promise that they had a few episodes back where they're gonna play together one more time and like I said I feel like this is like the closest thing to a confession scene we're gonna get from Corey unless we get something next week in the finale uh, but then again, we might not. Who knows? So it's the day of the competition for Kosei, uh, Takashi, and Emi. So that if they do well there, they're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna be able to go into the musical high school that they want to go to. We skip Takashi's performance and go straight into Emi's. And I realized something. I think we had a coming of age, the coming of age story that we've been having, like all the moments that we had for each character. I realized that I think we had Emi's like really early on that's why we don't have one now and she just plays on all this anyway that's not the important part the important part 
is essentially Kosei and him being in the same position, just just like he he's going to play, but he's gonna he, rather than playing for himself, he's gonna play for Koori. He's gonna play for Koori that because that's the, the promise that he made to her. Anyway, I like how we see the interaction between Takashi uh, and Emi with with uh, Kosei because. You see, like, if it was, like, at the beginning of the series where they kind of just hated his guts to, his, like, to an extent, they, would've, they wouldn't have been there to, like, help him out. But we see, like, Takashi and Emi, like, hey, you okay? Do you need, like, medicine? I'll go get some medicine for you and then you can come play and stuff like this. Hey, it's like, hey, you, do, you are looking very pale. You need to go to an infirmity. In, infirmity? Infirmary. I'll get that word one day. And that's, I like seeing their friendship, like, continue to grow. Anyway, Kosei's at the piano, then he, uh, in, like, he does, he doesn't do anything. He literally, he's literally in this position, and you know who brings him back? You know who brings him back? His childhood friend, Tsubaki, sneezes, and <laughs> I find it, like, the little comedic moment right there where, because you know when it's all silent and someone sneezes, like, everyone tries to look for you. But I like how, like, Kashiwage and Watari are, like, Watari's like, I don't know you, I don't know you, I don't know you, and uh, Kashiwaga is like, gosh darn it, Tsubaki, with her constant biznatch face. Anyway, that brings Kosei back. He he remembers that, hey, he's in front of a crowd, and his friends, his, yeah, his friends, I was going to say family, then I realized he doesn't uh, have any more family, I think. There's still his dad, but I don't know where he's at. Anyway, there's like his sensei, there's a student, there's that uh, kid, um, Miki, or M Mikey. It's spelled like Mikey, but I think with two eyes. Anyway, like, like everyone's there to watch him play and he's like I have to play this this is for me both for me and Corey and he does so and Kosei plays but while he's playing we get flashbacks of of the cast of characters saying key things to him that have affected him personally and he's like that's right I have to play and he's just mentally he's saying things inside his head and he plays and you see like how like like a few scenes earlier, it was there. Were, it was Kosei on a rooftop with snow coming down, and now it's cherry blossoms blooming and blowing in the wind, and you can see the reactions from literally, I, like the entire crowd. But a big one is probably like Nagi and uh, Miki or Mikey or some whatever his name is, and you see Nagi, she's crying. She's like, Sensei, it's so beautiful. And while that is going on, Corey is going undergoing her. Is she's undergoing her surgery, and let's see if they, let's see how it ends. I honestly don't think it matters at this point, but my grade for that episode, if you guys actually, if you guys care about it, it's it's an A. This series itself is just a masterpiece. It's it's definitely art, and so my question to you guys is, what does your line April? What does it mean to you? For me personally, I feel like your line April has taught me to be more understanding because, because like. In real life, we don't get to see everyone's, like, point of view and how they deal with things and, like, what they're thinking inside their head. We only know our thoughts and we can only read body language, essentially. But with Your Line of April, you see everyone's point of view and how they feel about certain things and how they deal with it and how they're able to cope with it. And you, and I, me personally, like I said, I, I understand now, like, if, like, like, I feel like down the road, you are going to meet someone eventually who has lost someone or going to lose someone or might lose someone to, to illness and it's gonna suck it does but it's up to the person and me or you to like be understanding don't be a dickhead and be like yo yeah, get the yeah, deal with it it's, just, it's gonna happen it happens in life just deal with it you have to be understanding and and just like like understand that person's feeling and just help them get through it Hopefully that made sense. If it doesn't, I'm, I apologize. It's, oh gosh, we're going to go into, I'm, I know I'm going to probably go into post-anime de depression syndrome next week after the finale. But, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the, that's my review. I guess I'll see you guys all next time for Assassination Classroom tomorrow. So until then, bye.